right, I'm checking in, giving you my race recap from the Dirty Kiln Half Marathon today. Up at Canoe Creek State Park, put on by the Allegheny Trail Runners. I finished first overall in an hour and 52 minutes and some odd seconds. The course is supposed to be a half marathon. It was came in at 14.03 this year with 2,398 feet of gain and descent. Before I get into the race, I want to say that this race is dedicated to my mother. Last year she passed away the week of the Dirty Kiln, and I wanted to win it so bad for her last year. My emotions, my adrenaline and everything got the best of me, and I couldn't pull it off. And I, I felt like a loser for weeks afterwards for not being able to win the race for her because I know she would have been so happy and proud of me for winning the race for her. It took me a full year. I finally pulled it off. So this goes out to my mother. Hopefully she saw it today. I know she was watching me. Still love you. So before I get emotional, I'll get to the race. Uh, first loop, which is it's basically split up into uh, two loops. First loop's like, uh, well, basically call it a 10K course. And then you're doing a second loop, which is probably, uh, we'll say five miles of different before you jump back on the last like mile or two of the same course. <clears throat> Every year that I've ran this, I've probably ran it about at least five times, now maybe six. I'd always go out way too fast because there's the first uh, couple hills right away. I'd burn myself out and not be able to finish right or have the energy to like push or you know get ahead of anybody or whatnot. So even if I couldn't finish first in past years, I might have finished like fourth or fifth or third, whatever the case may be, just because I didn't have the legs under me. So this year in my mind, the plan was to hold back and pace off of somebody for the first couple miles and then take over. <clears throat> Luckily, my buddy Lee this year was running. So, sorry Lee, I used him a little bit. I told him I was, just so I didn't go out fast. So he, well, I don't know right off the gate who was in the lead, I can't remember. But I wasn't worried about being in the lead. I just figured, you know, I'd run with him a little bit like we did at Rock and the Dog. I, know, I think the first hill we're running side by side, and then the second hill where it sort of turns a single track, he got in front of me, which is fine because it kept me in check. And I, again, I didn't mind that right off the gate. <gasps> it definitely helped me later on. I figured the second loop is when I would uh, turn it on a little bit and take over if I could. So after that first S, well, it'd be the second little hill, but like when it turns into single track and stuff, I took back over a little bit. And, but we still ran together pretty much for the first uh, loop of the race. I would say like even the first, well, yeah. Until we got to that eight station right after the uh, second loop starts. I might have had like a five second lead on them coming in to the flat area where the, uh, if you're only doing the five mile or the 10K or whatever, you come in, I'll get to that. But we ran together for pretty much the first uh, loop of the race. He shouldn't have let me re le uh, lead the race because Ben this year put out, well, Ben and the trail runners put out a bunch of uh, cards, a deck of cards on the course, and he won prizes if he brought them in. So me being in the lead, I ended up getting like eight on the first loop. Because <clears throat> Ben said there was, the aces were like free races, so I was trying to find a, an ace, and I was just picking up cards, because you can't tell because the blue, was, the backing was showing, which was blue what the card was so I didn't want to lose stride and then look at it I didn't I just like grabbed it and kept going and then I before I put it in my pocket I would look at it and be like oh crap well that's a six that's a seven of clubs 
there's a two. I finally got a jack and a king. A hearts, I believe. Yeah, they were both hearts. But I ended up getting eight on the first loop. Not to be greedy, but I wanted a free race. And I, I didn't know what to do with them as I got more and more. Because again, I wasn't going to stop and look. So I, uh, second half of the race, I gave one to a kid. And then I was giving them out to other people at the finish line. And then I gave them the K, uh, three to Kayla to put back on the course. And she went back out. Because I don't need a bunch of prizes. I even gave the hat that I uh, I got to Keith, my buddy Keith. Just something nice to do because, again, I don't need everything. I was just happy to win today. Plus, again, I was going for the free entries. I wasn't really worried about the mugs and stuff like that. Even though they're really nice... So anyway, me and Lee basically paced off each other in the first loop. We were doing like sevens. We'll call it sevens the whole time. Maybe like a 7.30. Because me and him are pretty strong runners. So we, even on the uphills and downhills, you know, we stuck together and, uh, you know, banged out that first loop pretty quickly. Obviously, in downhills, we're doing like sixes, maybe 6.30 if it's really bad. I know at one point before the first crick crossing, I fell on my ass. Luckily, I had my blank bits on, and I actually had them closed at that point because my hands were getting a little cold, and I went complete head first downhill. So that probably saved me and my race early on because if, if I had them open, my hands would have just been sliced open from the rocks that I hit. So I probably went out of like DNF at that point, or at least my hands would have been really sore and I would have been miserable the rest of the race. So, thank goodness I had them closed at that point for some reason. We get to the creek crossing. We cross that. As soon as we hit that creek crossing, I'll tell you what. You could feel it in your legs. Like, they wanted to cramp up a little bit. Not like the... Like, even like soreness just like sort of set in because they just got tight from being so hot. And then just like an instant cold because it was cold today. It's only 33 right now and it's 3 in the afternoon. It was colder at the race start, a little windy. The sun wasn't out yet much because the race started at 9 a.m. Actually, on the way to the race up here in Evansburg, it was actually snowing and laying a little bit, so that got me worried. Uh, well, I'll get to what I wore real quick. I wore uh, 2XU calf sleeves, 2XU uh, compression shorts with some shorts over top. I had a thicker... Uh, shirt on, I had a gator, my trail running hat, my only eye athletics one, and then I had my leg mitts on. So I stayed pretty warm during the race because it was uh, fast and hard as we were running. My body temp stayed pretty warm. Uh, the first aid station I called out, I wanted both, I got Gatorade water and I took right off. You know, Lee stayed with me even though we both took off and uh, actually used the eight station. It, the trail on the first loop wasn't actually bad, but I, I, I could tell already that it was going to be a complete shit show by the time we came around the second time. So luckily, we were out in front and doing the half. The poor 10 Kers. I'll tell you what, our half, the half people probably tore the shit out of the course for them. So I'm sorry for that. We went along pretty good. Uh, nothing too exciting in that first loop. If you know the course, I mean, it's it's a fun, exciting course, but I mean, like, nothing really happened because me and him were just basically running together, using each other. So then we come in. Well, actually, that last mile was kind of sw really swampy. And it was diverted a little bit. Usually we, uh, before you come into like the finish line or go out for the second loop, we usually like cut this one corner a little bit, but they diverted her uh, farther down around these two bridges. I think that's why we got more uh, distance this year than in previous years. Plus, I think we got more elevation. He was saying that the average was like 1840 in years past, and I had 2398, both ascent and descent. So my watch is pretty spot on, GPS-wise. If it wasn't, the ascent and descent 
since we uh, start and finish in the same area, it would have been off a little bit. So I'm kind of happy with that. Nice elevation gain from the course. Still very, very runnable course if you're any type of trail runner. <clears throat> so the second, uh, well, right before the second, we started the second loop, Ben was standing near the finish line. I just held up, pulled out all those cards out of my hand, showed him. He's like, oh, nice job. I take the uh, eight station right past the finish line slash start line for the second loop. I was calling out, but I got uh, Coke and ginger ale. I wanted water and Gatorade, but I just grabbed the two things real quick. And I'll tell you what, as soon as it hit my mouth, bam, I had like an energy spike just from it hitting my mouth and my mouth and my body uh, getting that signal that you're going to get like replenishment. It just kicked it in like instantly. So I ran with it up that first little hill again. And then from there, I just started gapping lead. But it was it was a complete muddy shit show from there. Anytime there was like a, uh, a flat or any type of like actual trail trail part. But I just kept pushing and pushing up the hills. Knowing what I'm able to do up the hills. Trying to get as much distance between the two of us. So that way if I did fade, you know, I'd have time to recover. If I, or if I needed a break, I could pull back a little bit. And then when we did hit the, the flat sections, I just busted my ass. At one point on the, uh, right before, there's like a little metal bridge and then there's like a 100, 200 yard sprint before we hit this uh, new section in, on the two mile loop. I was doing like a 530 at least on that, just trying to get as much space as I could. <coughs> then I hit the hill. Right where it got steepest, I walked just a couple uh, seconds, maybe five, no more than ten, just to get that little bit of a breather and a break for my legs so they didn't start burning out completely. I did that, I think, on the next two hills as well. The steepest part, I just braked for five, ten seconds. No point in uh, burning out without him, like, directly behind me. Because when I would look behind me, he wasn't in view. So I at least had a minute at that point. It couldn't have been much more than that. <clears throat> um, yeah, so powered up the next hill, got flat a little bit. Any, anytime there was a flat, I just made sure I busted my ass, went as hard as I could, fast as I could, you know, trying to keep the gap as wide as possible. Yeah, the last hill is when I really started to fill it. It's like a longer stretch. There was a couple grass sections in there. I was slipping and sliding a little bit. Um, let's see what else. But for some reason, I kept thinking I had another turn before, but the, the markings were really great today. I didn't get lost or hesitate at all. I just went with it and ran. Probably more markings than usual, but it helped so much today with the added markers. And then they actually did a fantastic job today uh, cautioning off the first loop from the second loop in between, which was nice. So you, that was like another metal thing that you didn't have to worry about. So then, once I knew we hit that last hill, for some reason I was just like, oh, this is in the bag now. Once we hit the more flatter sections of the course, I was like, all right, this is like my strong suit. I know what to do. You're not gonna lose any time here. So as long as you maintain, you got this. So I was kind of happy with that because I didn't have to push my hardest per se at that point, even though I probably pushed, should have pushed a lot more harder than I did in those sections, and I'll explain why in a minute. So then, did the creek crossing again. I could feel it, really feel it in my legs this time, but as soon as we did that creek crossing, it was just sloppiness. Like you were sinking in six, eight inches a little bit. It was definitely past your ankles. 
So the well, your your legs worked a lot harder today than they normally did. This is probably well, it is the sloppiest I've ever seen the course. I apologize to the state park how bad we tore it up today, but it also made it a lot fun and a lot muddier if you're running it. I joked around with some of the people uh, just doing the 10K as I caught them. I was like, oh, you're not even muddy. I was like, you got to get muddy and enjoy, like, enjoy it and stuff. Because they, they, they were tiptoeing around and I was just going right through it. I was just letting it all splash on me because, well, I had to, too, to stay in the lead. But what, uh, so I just started banging it out. I get to that last aid station on the far side of the lake. And then I took off again. It, it sort of like, uh, curves around the bend. I look back, I didn't see Lee at the aid station yet. All right, so I was like, all right, so you definitely have a minute on him at least right now. So remember that. So like, it just took the pressure off me mentally and physically that I could pull back a little bit. And I just kept running and passing people. And I get to the next crook crossing. Well, right before that, it was just it was just pure mud. It was like doing a obstacle race, like the, the bad sections of obstacle course races where they actually intentionally make it muddy. We'll call it Western Virginia where all those bees were in uh, 2021. If you if you were there, you know what the hell I'm talking about. That one was shitty, and it sucked the, it sucked your shoes right off. But, uh, so I kept going in that section over the creek. And I was like, all right, so you got this pretty much in the bag now if you don't screw up. Because that, that whole second loop, one of the main points I was trying to make was just not to do something stupid where you hurt yourself, you twist an ankle pull a hammy you lose a shoe your shoelace comes untied all that shit i was trying not to do that and thankfully i didn't do that pulling into wendy's real quick <coughs> so we get to the breast of the dam i go across it i look back i still didn't see lee i was like all right so you still have a good solid minute on him so then i'm on the single track pulling back a little bit more going you know actually that's the dam is before the next creek crossing or the last creek crossing or whatever i'm going around then i hit like the last mile and a half of the race i was like all right there's no way he's catching me now i was like he's too far back whatever so about a half mile to go uh, we go through a little thicket area where it's kind of muddy. I said hi to a couple of people that I knew, you know, not really paying attention much. Then it opens up into like the area where the race is being held and the start and finish and people could see like, it's got a nice finish because you could actually see people coming in from pretty far away and you could actually see the, if you stand at the finish line or a little bit up where the bathrooms are, you could see across the lake and you could see people coming if you know what they're wearing. You'd be like, oh, there's so-and-so if you're looking for somebody or waiting for somebody. <clears throat> so that's always nice about the race as well. Well, I look back when the race with about a half mile to go, some just told me to look back one more time and I'll be damned, here comes freaking Lee out of nowhere. It's like you could see him busting his ass and I got that, oh shit what the like you know what the hell so once i saw that my adrenaline started going and i just started busting ass as hard as i could at that point well not saying i had a bunch left but i just busted my ass to the finish line ahead of him if i didn't look back his ass would have definitely have gotten me and beaten me that today he even said he's like as soon as i looked back and saw him he knew it was over because he was I think he was kind of hoping I didn't see him and he was going to sneak up on me around because there was a bunch of people at the time like where I saw him there's probably five people so if he would have snuck in behind them I never even would have noticed but I just happened to pick him out like 50 yards behind me sneaking up on me and I just had to go for it and I got the win so I'm kind of happy I mean I am happy I got the win I told you earlier why I'm happy it was just a huge accomplishment to finally 
get this one under my belt. Plus, it's such a good race, a fun race, and it's so organized well, and they take care of all the runners. They make sure everybody's good medically, physically, and they encourage people. So I always enjoy like winning and going to those races. Even if I finish like 10th or 20th, I always enjoy going to the trail running races because you know the product is going to be top notch no matter what. So then again, after the race, I was talking to a bunch of people. I was probably there three, four hours after I actually finished just bullshitting everybody, watching all the other finishers come in, cheering some people on. I didn't get to take as many pictures as I wanted of. I should have. And I missed some people. Should have talked to some more people, but they had some awesome food this year. They actually had beer. They were allowed to have beer in a certain area this year. Their subs, I'm going to have to say something about their subs. They had banana peppers on their subs, which is a huge plus in my book. They had some onions on them, another huge plus. They tasted awesome. I don't know if it was just because I was hungry or what, but I was really excited about it. Had myself a nice ginger ale, a nice cookie. I didn't get to eat the chips. But I, again, as I usually do, I try to stay to everybody finishes, bullshitting to everybody, seeing how the race went, meeting some new people, because that's what it's really all about at the end of the day. No matter how you finish, you know, you try to grow the sport, encourage people, you know, hear different stories, see what people are talking about. Hey, what you like? What didn't you like? You know, just for future reference, just, you know, just shoot the breeze a little bit. Enjoy the moment. Enjoy a trail race because trail races are awesome for that fact. Everybody wants to talk. Everybody's so friendly. And it's just good atmosphere overall. So, I don't know what else to say. I had a blast today. Thank you again to the Allegheny Trail Runners for an awesome race again. Everybody involved. This uh, Canoe Creek State Park. Any of the medical staff, I'm not sure what all uh, units and stuff like that were there. But thank them. Thank everybody involved. Uh, anybody involved in the pre-race, post-race. Anybody that had their hands in this thank you again for another awesome race i appreciate it i know everybody else does so other than that i guess i'll see everybody out there soon be safe and have a good day